Hi, in this video I'll be talking about NBR8 and sharing my light fast test results for Roman Schmal, Holbein, and Chin Hands Van Dyke Brown watercolors. It is a fairly uncommon ingredient with only a few major paint makers offering it. Most brands sell a more light fast look-alike hue made from a mixture of iron oxide like PBR7 and a slightly textural black like PBK9 instead. I like the increased texture of black iron oxide PBK11 mixed in with a burnt umber, so I'll show that mix as a DIY option in the painting demo later in the video. Just in case you have not seen a pigment ingredient code start with the letter N instead of P, this signifies that the color contains organic matter. Natural brown number eight refers to a dark brown earth pigment that includes fugitive peat, humus, or decomposing soil, clay, asphaltum, or petroleum. These layers of brown and black coal that are prone to fading are mixed in with more UV-stable iron oxides that are found in the ground near them. So the light fastness varies based on the ratio of those ingredients in that particular batch. NBR8 usually has poor light fastness. All of the samples I tested showed signs of fading within three to six months. After one year, they are all visibly faded, especially in the diluted range. To put this in perspective, nearly all pigments rated LF1, max light fastness, or 8 on the blue wool scale, would not have shown any fading at this point. That being said, NBR8 is a good example of how a fugitive color can start to fade quickly, within a few months, but also not end up quite as bad as you might expect by the one year point and beyond. Shinhan's version held up pretty well with only minor fading. It's still considered fugitive because some fading happened quickly in the first few months, but it looks minor at one year because the fugitive particles in NBR8 only make up a small percentage of the color, leaving behind only the most light fast particles. The main reason I wanted to make this video is to address some misleading light fast ratings, especially the excellent rating on the Roman Schmal label. It is incorrect, this color is fugitive. This sometimes happens because ratings are passed along from a pigment powder supplier and not independently verified by the paint maker who bought the ingredient. I expect that this may be corrected in the future as Roman Schmal starts to complete his own testing. Then there's the problem of Holbein, who has changed their vague star rating system from four to three stars total in recent years. This made it so that old tubes of Van Dyke Brown, like the one I have, display three stars, but because it doesn't tell you what the total stars are, anyone who gets an old tube may be led to believe that this means three of three stars versus the old system's three of four stars. Holbein now rates MBR8 as two of three stars, which they say is moderately durable, but I don't agree with that assessment. This makes me really worried for artists selecting pigments suitable for their projects. So if you're researching Van Dyke Brown watercolors and might be making art that you want to hang on a wall or sell, then I recommend sticking to ones that are labeled as using stable ingredient numbers like PBR7, PR101, PBK9, or PBK11. The ones made from NBR8 are primarily of interest to those who want to collect historically significant pigments and don't mind if the color will fade. NBR8 is usually given the name Van Dyke Brown after the artist Van Dyke who used this brown in his oil paintings. You may see this spelled different ways depending on language translation. NBR8 may also be labeled as Cologne or Castle Earth based on the area of Germany it is primarily mined from. Historically, it was valued for its transparency compared to the more opaque umbers and ochres available in the past but we have a lot more transparent options available to us now. Many of the darker varieties of burnt or raw umbers labeled as PBR7 can provide a very similar color. Van Dyke Brown is a really good example of why it's important to shop for the pigment number code instead of the color name. 
Nearly every company that makes a Van Dyke Brown uses different ingredients. This can be as simple as just NBR8 or PBR7, but many brands actually use custom multi-pigment mixtures, including combinations of iron oxides and black pigments. Old Holland has one of the most unusual ones with a lot of red iron oxide mixed in, which is pretty as a color separating mixture, but looks significantly different than any other Van Dyke Brown I've seen. Technically, no one's Van Dyke Brown hue looks exactly the same, which might be due to the fact that there was a decent amount of variation in the historical pigment they're imitating. That could be disappointing for an artist shopping by color name and then switching brands to find that Van Dyke Brown doesn't look anything like the one they're used to. Van Dyke Brown is commonly used in landscapes or portraits, but I like it for giving things a vintage or dirty texture. I'll be doing a couple sketchbook pages using it to mimic parchment or cave art on rock walls. I could also see using these as a wash over the entire page to make your own toned paper for value studies. This is a good way to use up this color if you happen to buy it thinking it was light fast and are looking for a different use for it than wall art. On the left, I'll be using the three NBR8 watercolors. On the right, I'll use Roman Schmal's Cypress Burnt Umber Deep made of PBR7 and Mars Black PBK11. There are a few Van Dyke Brown hues out there made of PBR7 and PBK9 charred animal bone black, which doesn't give quite the same speckled black texture you see in these NBR8 options. Using PBK11 and painting wet on dry gave a decent speckled black texture as seen in my color swatches. Wet on wet where the PBK11 was able to mingle more with the PBR7 resulted in a more uniform granulation as seen on the cat stone background. If you'd like to match the warmer version from Holbein, more burnt umber or sienna could be used instead. I'd love to hear if you own a Van Dyke Brown Genuine or Hue, or if you like to mix your own dark browns. Let me know in the comments.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.